And I thought to myself, you know, he fits perfectly the description of a serial killer. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 20 of the scariest real life killers you've never heard of. Back when I was smart, I would let them come to me. For this list, we're looking at the most terrifying killers that haven't received widespread recognition. Which of these creeps you out? Let us know in the comments. The Harp Brothers. This duo holds a special name in true crime history, yet few people have heard of them. Perhaps that's owing to how long ago their crimes were. Macasia Big Harp and Wiley Little Harp are the first known serial killers in American history. Stories we heard make your blood run cold. I hear tell they move through the wilderness like the natives themselves. Silent, two lurking devils just waiting to spring on any unsuspected passersby. Their crimes spanned the southeastern United States in the late 18th century. Taking advantage of the remote isolation of the Appalachian Mountains, the brothers would kill settlers coming south after the American Revolution. Their true number of victims remains unknown, but most estimates place it between 39 and 50. Beat me and I'll submit myself to the courts and the noose without further protest. That's what you want, isn't it? Their actions attracted vigilante attention, and Macasia was brutally killed by a posse in 1799. Wiley was eventually caught and executed in 1804. Alexander Pichushkin One of the most notorious Russian serial killers in modern history, Alexander Pichushkin killed up to 60 people between 1992 and 2006. He became known as the chessboard killer and bits of park maniac, after the Moscow park where most of his crimes occurred. It was here, exactly at this place, where we found one of the victims. Of course, when we found him, it wasn't a pleasant sight. Many of his victims were elderly vagrants whom he attracted with the promise of vodka, company, and a good chat. He would then strike them with a bottle or a hammer. Pichushkin was finally caught in 2006 after killing co-worker Marina Moskalyova. Surveillance footage from a train station captured Moskalyova with Pichushkin, and he was finally taken in for questioning. I only had one thought. I wanted him to show us as many as he could, to tell us everything, where he dumped people, where he left them. I wanted as much evidence as I could get. He readily confessed to his crimes and is now spending life in prison. Dorothea Puente. Female serial killers don't often get recognition, even if they're as bad as Dorothea Puente. Known in the media as the Death House Landlady, Puente operated a boarding house in Sacramento that took in tenants who were elderly, developmentally disabled, or had substance use issues. This is where Dorothea would bring her victims after giving them the drug and alcohol combination, and then bringing them in here and leaving them on the floor until she could prepare them at a later time. Between 1982 and 1988, Puente killed nine of her patrons and committed fraud by collecting their pensions and social security checks. Seven bodies were buried on the property of her boarding house, and another was dumped in a box by a river. Puente was eventually caught after killing Alvaro Montoya, as his social worker had reported him missing. She was convicted of three homicides and given life in prison. After deliberating for 24 days, the jury found Dorothea Puente guilty of three murders, but were deadlocked on all the other charges. She died in 2011 at the age of 82. David Parker Ray Better known as the Toy Box Killer, David Parker Ray is not officially a serial killer, as he has never been lawfully linked to a homicide. However, many experts believe that he is responsible for up to 60 killings. When Ray died in 2002 and took that knowledge to his grave, it left investigators searching for answers. We're convinced that there are remains. It's just a matter of locating. Ray terrorized the American Southwest from 1957 to 1999. He would kidnap women and torture them in a trailer he called his toy box before drugging and abandoning them or killing them. The toy box is where Ray's fantasies came to life. There, he dominated his victims. The details are too horrible to get into here. While he was never convicted of murder, Ray received 224 years in prison for abduction and torture. He died of a heart attack in 2002. Carl Pensrum The awful crimes of Carl Pensrum range from burglary and arson to sexual assault and murder. Born in 1891, Pansrum had a difficult childhood with strict and abusive parents. As an adult, 
He moved around a lot and was in and out of prison for various offenses. In 1920, he bought a yacht and sexually assaulted and murdered 10 sailors in New York. His crimes continued in Southern Africa, where he targeted young and vulnerable victims, which he continued to do on his return to the States. From prison, he confessed to 21 murders, but may have killed over 100. He was executed in 1930 at the age of 39. Do you think he was sincere in not having any remorse? Or was it just a, a guy's? Well, I, I think he was so full of hatred and uh, with such a need, a compulsion to kill, that perhaps it never, never entered his mind. Samuel Little. When we think of the most infamous serial killers in American history, we think of Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, and John Wayne Gacy. Few ever bring up Samuel Little, even though he has the highest victim count of any American serial killer. Little's life of crime spanned decades. The FBI believes all of his confessions are credible. Some of the bodies were never found. He was already serving a life sentence for three murders in the 1980s. His first confirmed victim was 32-year-old Annie Stewart who was strangled to death on October 11, 1981. However, his killing spree may have started over a decade earlier with the murder of Mary Jo Brosley in December 1970. After Little was arrested in 2012, he confessed to killing 93 women. Mindy Lepree's murder was one of the few that did get reported. The deaths of most of the other women he claims to have killed never made the press. The FBI has officially linked Little to 60 of these 93 killings. By comparison, Bundy killed at least 20, Dahmer 17, and Gacy 33. Robert Picton Canada has also produced its fair share of serial killers, including Robert Picton. The son of pig farmers in Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, he and his brother David worked from a young age and were picked on for stinking of pig manure in school. After inheriting the farm, the brothers held raves on the property in the 1990s. And I tell you, I did a few stupid things in my life, which I don't want to recall about, but I'll explain them as the tape goes on. A police search in 2002 uncovered the remains of several missing women. Targeting sex workers and those with substance use issues in Vancouver's downtown east side, Picton had been murdering women on the farm. He was charged with 26 murders, but confessed to 49. It's believed that Picton fed some remains to his pigs. Some may have been mixed with pork and sold to the public. With today's four new charges, an unhappy historical moment for Canada. This case is now the largest serial killer investigation in Canadian history. Luis Garavito. Despite the fact that he is the most prolific serial killer in modern history, Luis Garavito is little known outside of his native Colombia. As a child, he was beaten by his father, tormented in school, and abused by neighbors. He grew into an angry antisocial person with alcohol use disorder, obsessed with torturing and abusing minors, mostly male. While you're cowering behind the couch while your drunken father is at the door and, and uh, making everybody scared, someday I will be drunk and come home and everybody will be cowering when I enter the room. He would sometimes wear a disguise to lure his victims to isolated spots. The horrific nature of what would happen next is just too gruesome to talk about here. Then with terrifying detachment, Garavito related the details of his crimes. In 1999, he was apprehended and eventually sentenced to a combined 1,853 years in prison. He's officially linked to 193 murders, but his confession would bring this to 221. Robert Hansen. This serial killer was especially terrifying for the way he hunted down his victims. In his youth, Hansen was unpopular and became obsessed with the idea of revenge, especially against women. In 1967, he moved from Iowa to Anchorage, Alaska, where he worked as a baker. However, in the 1970s, he began abducting women, sexually assaulting them and flying them out to remote locations. He would then hunt them through the Alaskan wilderness. I think everybody was looking at him real seriously because he made a good suspect when you looked into him. He had uh, a pretty extensive criminal background. An escaped victim, Cindy Paulson, warned police, who at first took Hansen's word over hers. Fortunately, famous criminal profiler John Douglas helped lead investigators back to Hansen. It's believed that Hansen killed between 17 and 21 women. Hansen accompanied troopers into the field to find more of his victims, represented by X's on his map. A total of eight victims were found. Some places on the map went unexplored. He died in 2014 while serving life in prison. Clementine Barnabet. 
Modern historians have cast doubt on whether or not Clementine Barnabet actually committed the killings for which she's been blamed. However, she was officially convicted of one homicide and personally confessed to killing 35. Following her arrest, Barnabet claimed that she was given a magical hoodoo talisman by a priestess of the Church of Sacrifice. Wanting to test its validity, she embarked on a series of axe murders throughout the state of Louisiana. She was eventually caught and sentenced to life in prison. However, she was subsequently released in 1923 and disappeared from the history books. Gerard John Schaefer. He's one of the most extreme cases of the modern serial killer that we have ever known in criminal history. In his mugshot, Gerard John Schaefer looks like an everyday man. His hair combed to the right and a friendly smile plastered on his face. However, a second glance may be warranted after learning that he potentially killed 30 people throughout the 60s and 70s. Schaefer was a Florida sheriff's deputy when he kidnapped two teenage women and tied them to a tree in the forest. The women escaped after Schaefer received a call on his radio. Had these two girls not been made of strong stuff, they would not have lived to tell the story and Schaefer would have never been caught. Sadly, Susan Place and Georgia Jessup, whom he kidnapped two months later, were not so lucky. He takes the two young girls by force to the woods near some swamps that border the ocean. In 1973, Schaefer was convicted of their murders and given two life sentences, but he's suspected of having over 30 victims. Vicki Don Jackson While quite a big name in Texas, Vicki Don Jackson never gained national attention, despite killing at least 10 people in a three-month span from December 2000 to February 2001. Working as a nurse in North Texas, Jackson used a paralyzer called Mivacurium chloride on her elderly patients, which prevented their ability to breathe. The deaths didn't raise any red flags owing to the age of the patients, but alarm bells started ringing once administrators noticed the missing Mivacurium chloride. They came to suspect Jackson, as she was often the last person reported in the victims' rooms before their deaths. A syringe used to administer Mivacurium chloride was eventually found in her trash can, and she was subsequently charged and sentenced to life in prison. Ronald Dominique Those from Louisiana may recognize Ronald Dominique as the Bayou Strangler, a serial killer who killed at least 23 men between 1997 and 2006. Dominique frequented gay bars around Houma, Louisiana, and would assault and kill the men he took home. We're not dealing with um, some, some very clever, conniving killer that, that has actually planned out his pleasurable activities in, in a meticulous way. Um, clearly, there is a, a method that works, but beyond that, there seems to be no care, consideration for these acts. In 2006, however, a survivor of Dominique's contacted the police to voice his suspicions about the man. Dominique was arrested after DNA matched him to recovered corpses, putting an end to his crimes. We went to court, Mr. Dominique pled guilty, and he was sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences. When you get a life sentence in Louisiana, you leave jail in a pine box. Israel Keys. It's clear just how cold and calculating he was. Between 1998 and 2001, Israel Keys served in the United States Army. Fellow soldiers described him as being a quiet alcoholic who would down entire bottles of whiskey. Keys began a criminal life committing bank robberies, burglaries, and arson. He also killed at least four people although he's suspected of a further seven. Investigators say Keyes is a textbook serial killer. Like other famous killers in the past, he took pleasure in the act of taking a life. He talked about the rush that he got out of it, uh, the adrenaline and, and kind of the high from doing it. And I think, um, unfortunately, I think he enjoyed what he was doing. Perhaps his most famous victim is Samantha Koenig. The 18-year-old was kidnapped from work, assaulted and killed. Her body left in a shed while Keyes went on a family vacation. He indicates to Samantha that his goal is to get money, and if he gets money, that he intends to let her go. There was no truth to that. Upon returning, he took a ransom photo, pretending she was still alive. Keyes was caught using her debit card and arrested, but he took his own life while awaiting trial. The Long Island Serial Killer it's not often that modern-day serial killers go unidentified, but the Long Island serial killer remains an exception. This may be a cold case for some time. It's unreal, and I'm just not... Also given other names like the Craigslist Ripper and Gilgo Beach Killer, the Long Island serial killer is suspected of killing up to 16 people between 1996 and 2010. Ten victims have been officially linked to the Long Island serial killer, 
as their remains were found in December 2010 and the spring of 2011. One by one, the bodies were identified, and with each name came the story of a troubled life cut short. Of the 10, four were escorts who had advertised through Craigslist. Although there have been several suspects of note, the killer's identity ultimately remains unknown. He's gonna make a mistake, they all do, and we're gonna get this guy. Salvatore Perone. Sal, why did you do this? Nicknamed the son of Sal, Staten Island man Salvatore Perone turned his frustrations with life into a bloody killing spree. His wife had left him and his business was failing, leaving him broke. In 2012, he began roaming the streets of Brooklyn and entering stores with Middle Eastern merchants. Arriving at closing time when the stores were empty, Perone shot and killed three merchants with a sawed-off rifle. His M.O. is still unclear, but police and witnesses say Perone was trying to sell women's clothing at the various locations, mostly small boutiques and 99-cent stores. After police searched his home, they found a 12-gauge shotgun, ammunition, and duct tape. He also carried around a so-called kill kit that included switchblades, a serrated knife, bleach, and latex gloves. I think it's reasonable to assume that he was going to continue doing this. And by arresting him, we have uh, saved lives. Perone was convicted of all three killings and sentenced to 75 years to life in prison. Lydia Sherman, an old-timey serial killer also known as the Derby Poisoner, Lydia Sherman lived in the eastern United States between 1824 and 1878. She seemingly had no regard for human life, not even her own children. She reportedly killed three husbands with arsenic in a span of seven years and disposed of eight children the same way. All of these deaths were officially attributed to typhoid fever at the time, with no one being any the wiser to Sherman's secret life as a serial killer. Sherman's crimes eventually caught up to her, however, and she was sentenced to life in prison. She died of cancer at 53 in 1878. Amelia Dyer. When it comes to 19th century serial killers, few are as prominent or as sick as Amelia Dyer. But even then, her name has mostly been lost to time. Living in Victorian England, Dyer was a baby farmer, an old practice in which people took in orphaned children in exchange for money. Unfortunately, Dyer had depraved ulterior motives for doing so. Amelia Dyer was a murderer and she knew what she was doing. This was a calculated career plan that she'd embarked on and sustained over 30 years, come what may. She killed her charges, and while Dyer has only been officially linked to six deaths, her body count is often theorized to be somewhere between 200 and 400. If that's true, it would make Dyer one of the most prolific killers in history. Dyer was finally caught in 1896 and hanged at London's Newgate prison. Her last words? I have nothing to say. Her death closed a casebook on one of the most deadly serial killer cases in British history. Patrick Mackay. His name was Patrick Mackay. He became known simply as the psychopath. Patrick Mackay may have been one of Britain's most serious serial killers. In his early 20s, Englishman Patrick Mackay became obsessed with Nazism. He had multiple substance use disorders and claimed to have committed his first killing by drowning an unhoused man in the River Thames. A few years later, on March 21, 1975, he fatally attacked a priest with an axe. Once again, the circumstances of the murder shocked even hardened police officers. I've been to several gory scenes before, but I, I've never seen so many injuries on uh, a murdered person before this. Following Mackay's arrest, he became the prime suspect in dozens of killings, most of which occurred after the victim was robbed. Mackay has been officially tied to three deaths, but he personally claims to have killed 11. He was sentenced to life in prison and remains there to this day. Detective Chief Inspector Lou Hart looked deep into Mackay's eyes during one haunting and memorable interview. He believes Mackay should never be released. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Carl Denke. This man's lack of mainstream attention is baffling, considering the extent and severity of his crimes. Accurately known as the Forgotten Cannibal, 
Danko was a Prussian man who killed and consumed up to 42 unhoused people between 1903 and 1924. Danko was a well-liked organist at his local Lutheran church and ran a food shop that sold various kinds of meat. Yeah, you can guess what people now suspect. Denko was caught in 1924, but took his own life before questioning could begin. When police searched his home, they found countless body parts. His motivation and much of his grisly story remains unknown. 